My Gavan and Melonin, and well met indeed. I'm Arake Galadrith, and head of the modding scene behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome back as we continue on as Dole Amroth. We are being besieged at Baradhan by a small Candish force, whilst the larger force stands nearby and twiddles its thumbs. We have our faction leader and his son standing ready just to the south there, who's going to move back to that bridge for now, but he is moving closer to support and assist and alleviate the siege. Once done, I don't know what we're going to do after that, but for the moment we're ending the turn, so let's do that and see what Kand does with this new... Uh, with this army, whether or not they, they gun for Barad Han proper. Now, what we really want is for that army, both of them, to assault Barad Han. Because we have the perfect anti-cavalry garrison, and Kand has brought a lot of cavalry. So we should easily be able to stop them. We don't really want to fight them in the field, because even though their cavalry is trash, ideally you want to try and limit the use and effective nature of their cavalry by forcing them to fight in the streets. So with any luck, um, they will come... Uh, no, they won't. They're coming for us right now. <laughs> Our fate has been decided. Unfortunately, we didn't get the bridge battle. We are outnumbered more than two to one, and yet it still is highly in our favour. Now we can actually see what's coming. It is a complete army of trash with only four units that you might designate non-trash. The two Candish raiders, Nomad horsemen and warriors. And of course, Khan Arkish himself. Now he'll help their army out uh, quite a bit. But on the whole, it is not an army to be feared, save for the insane amount of archers they seem to have brought. Um, four foot archers, by the looks of it, and two cavalry archers, plus Khan Arkish. That's not that bad, actually. It is just mostly marauders, isn't it? It's just an army of marauders. So all we need to do is form a nice solid wall. It's such a damn shame I didn't stop on that bridge. I should have stopped on that bridge. No guarantee that Kand would have attacked me, of course. They, the bridge battle, the AI is at least clever enough to understand that bridge battles aren't the best places to meet their foes. But it would have been nice. Oh, hello. We've got a nice hill here. Let's use that to our advantage. This is a proper hill as well. Long sloping slope. That's tautological. Long, um, gentle slope. Meaning our archers will still be able to fire whilst our melee is tied up. Which is good. Speaking of tied up melee, let us return to the days of Rome Total War and build ourselves a horseshoe. Stay in defensive mode, please, everyone. Oh no, we got a small number of spearmen over there. They can be used too. Welcome to the grand formation. You can all group together. No, you can't because my mouse has not changed. Ah, oh, that's so annoying. Why have you not changed, mouse? We're playing the game. All right. The swarm technology for some reason hadn't turned on, so my mouse hadn't changed. But anyway, here we are. Our archer units can all group together as well. There's not many of you, um, and we should probably widen you, actually. Do what you can. Right, and then if you stand, curl yourself sort of back in like that, cover their edge. Three of you, just you're like a little mini roadblock, really. Um, Adrahil will do the, the bulk of the work on that side if need be. And then we have got two cavalry units, and we'll use those where necessary in time. But look how many cavalry forces there are. <laughs> dear, oh dear. The real threat, to be honest, and the only thing in this whole army that scares me is Arkish himself. Because these guys are very good archers, so they'll take a lot of our cavalry if they home in on Imrahil. Um, and once they finish with their bows, they're pretty good um, charging cavalry as well. So they, they're they the only real risk. Everything else will fall to our nice U-shape. Although it looks like they are manoeuvring to at least get a better position on that side of the hill. We're going to give them something to think about early doors and totally screw up their formation. Nice. Deep charge. Pull yourselves back. Oh, some of their javelin forces killed some of Emmerhill's men. Oh, and I didn't tell them not to run away. Oh, what an annoying waste. Right, some of their cavalry is looking to go around the edges. 
But our cavalry is so much better than theirs that we'll have them no trouble. The AI wants desperately to flank our forces, and because we've created this sort of anti-flank <laughs> formation, they just don't know what to do with themselves. Now oh, there we are, the losses from the charge start to register. Just as the squires arrive. Oh, they're shaken! Khan Arkish is leading them, and they're shaken from something like that. Hold your lines. Get Adriel out of running away. Alright, you guys, you don't need to be flanking on this side anymore. Imre Hill lost a couple of units. Try and target those Marauder Cav. Oh, there are quite a lot, actually. Oh, the Nomad Horsemen have gone for the Haven Guard. That's handy. You go for those marauders. Where is Karnakish? If all of you could please shoot him. We've won on that left hand side. We'll just let them charge us. They're only marauders. Um, how are you guys doing? Taking a bit of a beating, but otherwise you are killing them. Ah, oh, they charged against the Nimrodal Mariners. Oh, we've lost just as many as they have. Everyone's coming out of defence. Imrahil, you're no longer being best utilised by stopping their Marauder Cavalry. There's not enough Marauder Cavalry to worry either. So get out there, we're going to start charging you into the back of the enemy. Adriel, come and kill these Marauders. You guys break out of the formation and prepare... Thirteen of them are out. All right, please charge into the back of that large group of step tribesmen, and you go for those nomad warriors. They're being peppered by enemy marauder cavalry. But it is no matter. Right, keep it up. Just keep going and going again. Let's start dropping their infantry off. Keep it up, Nisvan. Come on. You've got this. Both of you target them. Candice Raiders running in on us over there. Talon Knights. Come on, there's only two Marauders left. Your Talon Knights for crying out loud. Imrahil. Let's get you in before they come for you. Maybe a little bit too late. It is indeed. What are you, Haven Guard? Right, you guys, come and hit this Marauder unit that's harassing Imrahil. As he plows into the enemy again. Did get his lances down though, so the charges are going to be very good. Yeah, they did just enough. Right, you're not doing anything anymore. Come and hit the Marauders over there. Oh, this is way too evenly matched. But then we do, we are hugely outnumbered. <laughs> Imrahil has been reduced to six people. Oh, goodness. Who was that? Marauders. How are they doing that much damage? Only half our force remains. Yes, I know. They've broken through our militia lines. Only half the enemy force remains. Their cavalry has done a lot more damage than I ever expected from crappy marauder cavalry of all things. Our pikes though have lost almost no men and have been holding off the only good ground unit that the enemy has. I think sooner or later it'll be time to get the mariners to draw swords. There's nothing behind us anymore, is there? No. So once we are fairly certain that the cavalry is all tied up, what have we got over here? Could really do with the pikes over on that side. Just keep firing, come on, keep firing. We're going for a bit of a gamble, but we're going to use Imreal. 
If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. I don't know where Arkish is. Where how do we think? Oh, he's still over there. Oh, he's down to only 16 men, though, because he's been fighting against the spear unit. And we're about to close in on them. Once Arkish is gone, then this is over. We just need to, of course, make sure that... Right, you guys, change your plan. We are just going to charge you in. I don't want you in a battle of attrition with the archers. That's never going to do anything useful. The archers are at least of our concern. You go and support them. Imhil, just stay out, keep out of the battle. This might be one of those rare occasions where Prince Adrahil is going to get more kills than Imhil. Right, we've won on the left completely, and our units are not being utilised at all. So let's get the pikes to, to form a nice wall there. We're just making sure that no one's charging into Imrahil. <laughs> we can't afford to lose him if he dies in this step archer charge. No, he did all right. Not sure he really killed very many, but he did all right. Our men have fought long and are becoming tired. He's keeping the archers on their toes. The enemy is finally breaking. Oh, and those marauders just... <laughs> <laughs> suicided themselves for some bizarre reason. Arkish is down to just his bodyguard. That explains a lot. Right, it's over. It is over now. Oh, I've still got five of them alive somewhere. Yes, and it's over. How many have we got? 93. We can call it. This oh dear, we lost picture. way more than I was expecting. But then, I don't know what to expect. I, I constantly bash on marauders, but they're still cavalry, I suppose. So you should always at least keep an eye out. 332 kills, Royal Swan Guard. Imrahil still killed more than Adrahil, even though he was uh, he lost loads of people. Second was actually Amrothian Guardsman, taking 290 down. That's amazing. And then after that, 278 Nimrodel Mariners. So the archers did do relatively well. Although, is that more when they got into melee that their numbers rose? Pikemen at 206. The absolute worst was the Horondor Mercenaries, who only took six. But then there were only three of them. So that's too many. each. It's not bad. We lost very few to friendly fire this time. Um, the Amrothian archers lost loads, but do remember, Amrothian archers are militia. You know, we're not expecting wonders from them. They're not. They're not what they were before. Their strength has been sapped and, and reduced. And I'm not overly concerned at the losses because we're now going to form up into one grand armée, to quote our most hated enemy. Um, and then we've got an army that'll be actually strong and proud but what we need to assert is how long do we think Harad will give us before they come again and should we backstab them before they get a chance to do us in uh, we will have to wait and see but I'd really like to take Gobel Mirland actually so I'd like to at least press down to there but it leaves all of this northern side available for Khan to attack us so I don't know the Khan of Khan is dead <laughs> Oh, we get a merchant's guild and baron and we can afford it what is this madness <laughs> please tell me you're lord avalon oh no you're rebels Coward. i will only address well this evil we have vanquished the enemy we have vanquished the enemy oh no i don't want to do that do i maintain order now i want to do that well this evil 51 still though dear dear is victorious. Right, I don't want to have loads of bodyguards in Ready one army. Weapons. And what I also don't want to do is have my faction leader and heir in the same army. Um, so something will need to be done about that. I think Adrahil is going to... Oh, no, Imrahil is so useful. So, so useful. So Adrahil Ready and Mistvan, you're going to go back. We're going to have to wait another turn. I've just seen Kanda coming at Lynn here. Did we build the armory? No, damn it. What are they bringing? I will not waste hmm. words on you. Yeah, Adrahil and Mistvan, you're going to go back. And we'll worry about what we're going to do with you. And Imrahil, you take over the army. So 
We will be holding on to Baradhan, definitely. Particularly, we just got Merchant Skilled. If we can get that up to the second tier, we can actually get a Merchant, which will help us out so much. But what we really need is a ship. Just one little ship. If we can get back to Tolfalas and take that back, that will help so much. Um, but then how much money are we now actually making? 2,000. That's not bad. We can train a ship for 2,000. So perhaps Adrahil... Because we're not going to be... Harad might invade navally, actually. They do have the ability to train boats. They just don't get very good ones. But that won't stop them from trying to send troops by the sea. But I think we do definitely want to consider getting some cheap ships. Their upkeep is quite low, so once they're trained, it's not too bad. Oh, your upkeep's not even that bad, so let's try and build a little fleet that will actually survive. We won't be able to train it all that quickly, but... And then we'll, then we'll take stock. Have we got anyone who can head out and give me a tower? Watch for the enemy. Oh, it's Lord Avalobun. It will be an Avalobun. Maintain order. Oh, we cannot let him Waiting. slip by unnoticed. Your Ready your weapon. Maintain order. I've only got these two, but I think they'll do it. This is going to be such a gamble, but we're going to go for it. Let's save it now instead. Slay them. Oh, I do love a challenge. Avaloban. All right, let's catch him. Him trying to sneak past. Him trying to sneak past using the forest as a, as a, as a shield. Foolish. We'll end him. And that leaves only Gimelzor or Gimelthon, which one, whichever one it is, alive in Gobel Mirlon, hopefully. So we might be able to regicide the buggers. Right, Baragund. Just, it really bothers me that you're not the Archer General. I'm sorry, everyone, but for the next version, I'm going to swap their portraits so that that one, so that these guys, the Seaward Spearmen, are going to have a more knightly looking portrait, and Baragund is going to go back to being Mistvin's portrait. Or, and I'll probably swap the names as well, because I'm so used to this person being my Archer General, and it bothers me no end that Mads Mikkelsen is now a knight. Anyway, sorry, I'm wasting time. We attack them, so they will almost certainly retreat, and they have done, to the high ground up here. Where are you? Oh, there, they're there, they're there. Right, so if you guys can go to there. It's going to be Hammer and Anvil of the most basic and refined form. Baragund and his seaward lancers. I keep calling them that. Seaward spearmen. It's because seaward spearmen are new. They, the seaward lancers used to be the only seaward unit, and then these spearmen have been joined in. Or oh, is that even true? No, I think I'm just used to using the lancers more, so I just say their name more often. Anyway, Baragund is going to... Why am I calling him that? Mads Mikkelsen is going to attack Avaloban and keep his golden armoured foolish fools pinned. Once they are distracted, then the not Hugh Jackman is going to charge into their back and take their numbers down. They have an ever so slight edge, I think. No, actually, by the time we get to them, we'll be the ones fighting downhill, so they've... they've They've shafted their own advantage. But this is fantastic. But of course, we're after that gentleman on the right-hand side there. He's so cavalier and brazen, he doesn't even wear a helmet. It is he that we shall drop today. They do look so good. I really like that bodyguard. Oh, I didn't realise the sword glitches through. What are we worried about glitching for? This is such an old game. Such high quality unit there. And I love masks. Any unit that wears a mask, I'm all about that. So anyway, are we nearly here? Yes, as we emerge from the trees. I'm surprised he didn't run, to be honest. The AI thinks it's going to win this. That's what fascinates me more than almost anything else. Oh, hello. The buggers are trying to change the course of history. Cavalry, now is the time. Into position. And go. Let's watch this in glorious close-up. Oh, it's magnificent. It is absolutely magnificent. Many are slain, and those that aren't are just pressed into the spears of Barragun's men. We had a hundred and something to start. They had seventy something to start. I think this is already in our favour before it's even begun. In, our favor. Victory will be ours. in we go again, please. The general has already been cut off and surrounded. They're coming again, they're coming again. Spears down. They're going to charge right into the rock, though, which is disappointing. they got a number of them. There we go. And again, let's keep it at time six now. We know what's happening. 
battle is very much in our favor. Victory will be ours. The enemy's getting crushed, but they also, the enemy, by sheer dumb luck, has managed to create a defense to my charging tactics by putting a rock between their two sides of their armies. So now I can't actually charge effectively. I mean, we're definitely going to win. Our numbers now outnumber them. And if we just take a look at the stats for a brief moment, our attack is 7 and our defense is 23. Their attack is 13, so twice as good, but their defense is only 32. So obviously it's better, but it's not good enough to um, now surmount the nearly three times the number of men we have against them. Yeah, no, our charging's not really working anymore. Um, if we charge from that side, though, we might be able to get this little gathering here. Yes! Nice. General's doing very well, though. He's survived for a long time. Right, you guys can just stay in the battle now. It's down to the last few. Avalobin is proving to be a fantastic general. He doesn't need a shield. He doesn't need a helmet. All he needs is a sturdy blade and everyone to s attack slowly, I suppose. <laughs> he just keeps turning around. The blows must just be glancing off of him. It's like playing Skyrim on legendary difficulty, isn't it? You hit them in the head with the spear, no matter how many times you do it, they just don't go down. Of course, you don't get spears in Skyrim, though. So it would be a sword. I don't think your lance is going to help you now. Oh, no, go. Give him give him a prod. Give him a prod. There's our two generals riding gloriously. Anyway, let's speed this up. We don't want to stand here for another ten minutes waiting for him to die. It's going to be a while until he does die, though, which is annoying. The only thing I could think we could do... Let's pull them away. Run them away. And then charge in. Go again, come on. Good Yes! And he survived! Yes, that little man who kept him there that whole time. Glory to be to you, sir, for you have won this day. We lost 27, but it makes absolutely no odds because they're generals, they'll replenish. So fan bloody tastic. Avaloban is down. The Ardenaim have a single leader left. Hopefully, fingers crossed. And with any luck, we're about to catch him in Gobel Mirland, which I will now move the army down to try and take because of our loose ceasefire with Harad. But also because we need regions, and Mirland is a wealthy and prosperous region. And also, if we can, if we defeat Umbar, of course, their ships will go neutral, which um, means we won't have any more threats from the sea, which is good. But it's all dependent on whether or not we can even train a fleet. But we'll try. We'll try our damnedest. Yeah, pikes would be really handy. How much do they cost? 760. Ah, oh, no, definitely try and get the pike. In fact, can you just get the pike? Yeah, perfect. Much better. Much, much better use of our time. Let's end the turn. Merge our armies together and see how we get on. I want to get Tolfalas before someone like Gondor gets it. Or, um, or Harad. Because if we do kill the AA... The island will, of course, go rebel. And Harad might sneak up there to try and take it. But then I don't think... Harad aren't predisposed to be a naval nation anymore. And... It'll be a long time before they... They don't share the same culture as the Ardenaim, so the two cities we sold them the won't be as useful for them us. as they might have we been have otherwise. Um, so we'll see. Oh, despite the best efforts of the Blue Wizards, their attempt to crush the capital of Kand while successful was met with strength that overwhelmed them and both Astari died in battle. Without the leadership of the Blue Wizards, the surviving dwarves were withdrawn to the Red Mountains, leaving behind an exhausted force of Kandish rebels that will no doubt soon be crushed. It is a great defeat for the Free Peoples. I'm assuming in that instance, then, those messages have come in the wrong order. Sterletzakand has fallen. But the Blue Wizards have died. So I assume the that Kand has... I was hoping that they would, to be honest, because I think it would have been a bit too easy if they didn't. Um, but Kand has stood with the evil nations. Although the message we got there was all wrong. Now, let's just go over to Cannes and see what's happened. Because that... You're supposed to get a message telling you what they've done first. And then you decide. So, Amukand has fallen. 
Still at Sikander's Fallen. The Kandish Varyag, the Kandish leader is now Khan Orash. And then Khan to the Inquisitor has sided with Khan. So yes, Khan has stayed loyal to Mordor and they, for their troubles they've gained um, Ancanta the Inquisitor. And yes, unfortunately I did just notice that lands of the Poros are held by the Ardenaeum so they might have a general up there which is really disappointing. Anyway, let's sort our troops out. So you guys are going to go back. Take with you the Haven Guard because we might be able to retrain them. And oh, that's about it really. I mean, you might as well take them because they're not going to do anything other than die. So you guys head back. Forward. Build me a watchtower. Oh, we could have trained a longship. We don't have any money. Uh, the rest the of you of into the city. Merge the armies together. Captain of Gondor. Lamandir go with them. The whole army then. Except for the three of you. We're not going to bother with you. Uh, 43 of you won't have any effect in this battle. So Forward. that should do. Yes, we're leaving it unfortunately heavily unguarded and all of our money is going into our ships your weapons. Onward. Be gone. Assail the enemies of Gondor. bugger off friend they are gone from these lands. this land is Ambrothian and will be once more your orders right Baragrond if you come and find out yes. you are called Baragrond aren't you yeah I thought he was Right, I assume our ships aren't training. Oh, one of them is. That's interesting. Uh, we're losing money because Lin here is being besieged. We don't know what the force is, but I only think they're probably twice as big as us. It shouldn't be too bad. Um, but we'll see when we end the turn. They'll they'll yes, they'll play their hand. All we need to do, all we need to do, is take Mirland. Take Mirland, and that should stop any advance from the AA. We don't have any sizable force to hold Harad back for when they do decide to betray us. But uh, if we can hold them at Mirlon, that would be way better than at Baradhan, because then we can focus our attention on Takand. Harad might, they might, allow us to continue the ceasefire going for some time. We just don't know yet. Athelion has been attacked. My lord. As you wish. Gobo Mirlon has our Gimelzor, the faction leader within. Protect the blood of As was hoped. Watchmen. Yes, my lord. And that's fantastic news. Oh, just Without as can question, bring more crap forwards. Captain of Gondor. Baradhan, uh, Lin here is more important than Baradhan, and killing the AA is more important Protect than pulling back to defend a, a town in the back end of nowhere. It's, oh, hang on, we can destroy that. Is that a load of money game? Ready your weapons. Interesting that Cand did not attack Lin here yet. Yeah, very interesting, in fact. Um, Baradhan, can you train anything? No. Damn shame. Damn shame. Not going to waste money on building anything there. But if we can actually build something, I think that's probably a fair shot. Anywhere. Oh, Etheland. Yes, you've got some nice choices. Settlement. Let's look at the settlement details. So, farming at the moment gives a 73 and it would jump up to 146 so twice as much trade gives 174 and would jump up to 190 and give a 50 increase from buildings so they're about the same to be honest uh, the farming is slightly more expensive so let's go for that apparently we're going to lose money doesn't surprise me though with Barrett Han siege now come on Cand are you going to attack Barrett Han or are you going to stand outside it like cowards if we can take the AA out and get Mirlond, that should realistically resolve many of our financial woes. And then we can regroup and formulate an, a plan of action to deal with Cand once and for all, to really stop their constant strides to kill us. <laughs> right, here they come. We're closing in on the end of the video, but I'm going to fight it anyway because I want to slaughter these fools. And we are about to easily do that, courtesy of a one pike unit and one javelin unit. Captain Yorthon, I will not be surprised if you are not man of the hour and raised up after this victory. You'll note they had a reasonable amount of cavalry, which will die. And then otherwise it was half battalions. We do get, although weaker, a type of tower in these battles, so... Oh, this is the Vinspep song called Chasing the Traitor. 
javelins. If you stand actually a little further back. This is a very enjoyable song, by the way. Just as a complete side note, if you happen to be in the market for fantasy style music. But that is, I think, either the mobilize or tension music, which is only used when you're setting up your forces. And then it swaps out to battle music. I think I need to rejig it, really. There should only really be one or two at tops mobilize and tension songs. And then the majority of them should be the battle songs. But I'm not sure. Mobilize is definitely when you're setting up your forces. So that's when we were hearing that song. Tension, I think, is right now, when our armies haven't actually met yet. I think this is called Tension. And then finally there's Battle, which is obviously Battle. Coastal right, Coastal Wardens, get in a position. Don't fire your javelins until that gate is down. The enemy are battering down Speaking the of which, Pikes, give us a little bit more room. Coastal Wardens, stay ready, stay ready. The enemy's ram has breached the gates. Go for it now. The walls are no longer ours. Yes. The enemy have taken them. Fire into the maelstrom. You guys, come out of defense. Hit the buggers. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. We aren't just going to smash this enemy. We are going to absolutely slaughter them. 26% of them have died as our pike line moves forward. Hold your ground, hold your ground, hold your ground. Coastal Wardens. Coastal Wardens, get ready. You're coming inside, mate. You're coming in the side, mate, is what I just said there, by the way. Um, I appreciate that may have sounded like something else. Right, in the Coastal Wardens go. Apply the pressure. Ready for orders, sir. Pikes, drop the wall. Our men have slain the enemy general. And let's the just mash very them. Much in our favor. Victory will be ours. I'm very disappointed to learn that these only towers the don't shoot troops. Remains. They only shoot siege. And they only shoot siege with terribly poor arrows. They're never going to do any damage to siege. So this battle map is one where you can write off any support from towers, unfortunately. Still a very cool battle map, though, isn't it? The glorious flag of Dol Amroth, which has an elven tinge to it, separating us from those peasants in Gondor. The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run them down. They can capture at least a few more. Oh, they do start shooting, but not very well. 51 men lost. Well done, Yorthon. 164, but the wardens took 77. That's not bad for our ab objectively worst unit. Coastal Wardens, when they aren't using a javelin, are the worst statistically of all of Dol Ramnoth's units. Is Yorthon going to be made Man of the Hour? That's the real question. Ah, oh, Cand went back for Han. Don't destroy the Merchant's Guild, Cand. Because when we come back, I'm going to want one. Oh, and look what these scum have done. Bjorn's halls have been besieged. Fornos is assaulted. The world is failing. Ardenheim have allied with Ened Wythe, of all things. Ened Wythe have then also allied with the High Elves. And the High Elves have now allied with the Dwarves of Ered Lewin. Fascinating. Right, whoever we attack in this little makeup, all of them are going to be involved. Um, so we're probably going to have to fight that one annoyingly. Adrihil, do we still want you to go back? Um, we're going to lose Barad Han. There's no way around that. We didn't build anything here, did we? No. And we don't really want to destroy anything because we'd like to use it when we come back. So we'll they're going to take that one, sadly. But we're going to have to just leave it to them. But with the siege broken, we make good money again. Oh, you can retrain if you can. You're an, you actually can train quite a solid little force, to be honest. You've got more than enough stuff there that can won't Captain be able to deal with. Door. I'm thinking, to be honest, to bung all of these into the fort and just get a bit of free upkeep. But actually, Squires, you can retrain. So you Make guys go order. back. Haven Guard, go all the way back to Dol Amroth, yes. where we will, we will retrain you in time. But for now, just get the free upkeep. So it's only Adrahil and Mistvin, and they won't get free upkeep because they can't be trained. Um... But I don't think sitting you in the fort's the best bet in case you get trapped there. So if you move to Lin here and, and just become garrison commanders, then that'll be our stopping point. And as I say, we'll lose Barad Han, but that's fine. That's not the goal. Gobel Mirland is what we want. Just out of interest, do they all fight? Yes, they do. Gimogad has two units of Rondal Mercs. They won't do anything. Erinda has trash as well. And Menelmir also has traitors and trash in the midst. But I'm not going to fight that battle. I am going to... Nah, sod it. Let's do it. 
get this little measly crappy battle out of the way and then we can push on Neolon for the next episode. Which unfortunately will now be in a few weeks time um, as we are slotting into the roster. So we have three enemies to face and they're all coming from different locations. But I think to be honest Imrahil will be able to do most of the damage here today on his own. Let's line up our force somewhere. At the back over here, actually. No, we attacked them, didn't we? Oh, of course. They're going to form into a line. And we've got plenty of archers, so we might as well use them. Please don't run away this time. Oh, we've got two cavalry units now. Of course, of course, of course, of course, of course. Imrahil and not Hugh Jackman. And Imrahil showing what the upgraded unit looks like. And the other guy showing what they look like before they upgrade. In days gone by, they used to have um, Polish hussar wings, which I did at first think quite were quite cool. But then after you use them for a fair amount of time and you note they're the only unit in the entire game that has those wings, they, they stood out in a bad way. Not really sure on the game's thought process behind where these armies are all coming in from. That it'll do. Right, the army that we actually want to shut down with arrow fire is the one directly in front of us. So Imrahil and Hugh, you guys come up here, you're going to deal with the, those coming in. The ones coming in from over there are too far away to worry about yet. Many of our archers are currently hidden. In fact, much of our army is hidden. But there we are. The archers are starting to fire. Oh, no, they're not. All right, move the line forward then, and let's claim that nice little hill there. Off we go. All right, Imriel, what's coming in? Archers, you hit those, and you flank out to the side, and we'll get you to charge the archers after Imriel has hit them. Oh, that was awful, Imriel. We didn't kill us almost a single one. But they're in a position now, so charge them now. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. Slides into the raiders. Doesn't quite make it through to the archers. But then whilst you're in position, Imrahil can come back. Our men have slain the enemy general. And they're down. Without him, his troops will lose their will to fight. And the mercenaries over here. Move those out of the way so the archers have a clearer target. Only half the enemy force remains. Um, oh, the raiders are running away. Charge into those. Ah, oh, the mercs have made it to us. Keep up the fire and we'll get Imrahil back in just a moment. And the army coming in from the other side. Oh, bugger, it's right here. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> right, let's get this one dead. Right, that'll be them off. Yep, there they go. Right, now let's go and support our units over here. You guys just keep firing into the back of those. And you hit those archers down there. Barrow guns on those territorial guardsmen. The battle is very much in our favour. Victory will be ours. The enemy, the enemy, the enemy army flees the field. No, they're our all running away. The enemy yes. Guard him well and make it. Sixty-three men victory. lost. Hundreds today. killed. <laughs> hundreds killed. And Imre Hill taking hundred and ninety-five. No one else even got near to him. But there we are, those three are dead. Now we can go and siege Gobo Mirland, and that will end the episode. And hopefully they haven't trained any additional forces, and then we can capture their last reigning monarch with any luck in there on his own. But he may well have adopted someone by now, it should be a pain. And of course last time we attacked, we didn't even get to the walls before the siege towers burned us down. Ah, oh, they did put the whole army in there. But no, we're coming in. We're going to have, I think towers, ladders, to be honest, are probably better than towers. 
Because the towers can burn, the ladders you can just keep running. Now they've got a lot of trash and they're trapped in there and it's going to be nine turns of a siege. That's so long. Bugger. But Lin here can hold before that's out. But anyway, for now, that is going to be where I end it. So thank you very much for watching, if indeed you have. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And until we speak again, dear friends, Navarre and Adan Peramad Melunin, and farewell.